So my question is, how do you think society's tax systems will implement anonymity in finance? In other words, how can we have an income tax and Monero or zero knowledge proof transactions? Um, that's a question I also get a lot, which is how does society adapt to a future where everybody can tax evade? Um, I really like this question because it reveals a couple of fundamental assumptions that we do not discuss in society often. You see, rich people have been tax evading the entire time. Multinational corporations can do jurisdictional arbitrage all day long. Today, the tax paid by multinational corporations is at a historic low of less than 6% on earnings. 6%. Now, as a self-employed person in the United States, I pay about 37% in my taxes, uh, and for that I get no health care. <laughs> Motherfuckers. And <laughs> and uh, so the point is that the real problem here isn't the fact that tax evasion happens. The problem is that we just democratized jurisdictional arbitrage and allowed the middle class to operate like a multinational corporation, and suddenly that is shocking. What if everybody operated like a multinational corporation? That's exactly what just happened, right? What if everybody could print Bibles? What if everybody could publish opinions? What if everybody could carry weapons? What if everybody could modify their DNA? What if everybody could 3D print a weapon, strap it to a drone, and fly it around shooting people? These are all questions we have to address as a society, because in the relentless march of technology, what we are doing at a very fundamental level is changing the scale of individual power. These are superpowers. Superpowers that our ancestors didn't have, and through technology we gradually acquired superpowers. I can publish to a million people in seconds. None of my ancestors could even imagine such a thing, let alone do it. And so the implications that we're really trying to deal with are much broader than just finance. There are the implications of what happens when individuals have superpowers, and some of those individuals are messed up in the head, or need a lot of mental health support, or need to be isolated from society, because there's a few of those too. Yes, that's a problem. I don't pay taxes because if I didn't, I'd get caught. I have to make my own moral calculation about how I want to participate in a society that, at least on its face, is democratic, and, or even not a democratic society. And even though I know that the majority of my taxes go towards war, a small percentage actually do help people in need, even in the United States. A trickle builds roads. Some of it funds schools. Some of it gets kids vaccinated against polio. And so for that reason, I pay my taxes, not because I can't get away with it. I can get away with it. And I can get away with it not because of Bitcoin. I can get away with it because I can afford really good tax accountants. And I can repatriate or travel around the world because I have really good passports. And I have literacy and numeracy and education and a small amount of wealth, certainly by comparison to the rest of the world. I have privilege, and that allows me to not pay my taxes. And so the question is, what happens when you allow everyone to not pay their taxes, even those who didn't have privilege? And the problem is, you just gave privilege to everyone. What a shocking idea! The privilege of financial inclusion. We will have to re-envision how we fund societal goals. Some people suggest things like a combination of consumption tax, sales tax, with universal basic income. I'm actually a fan of universal basic income, which immediately makes a whole bunch of libertarians on Twitter scream at me. Um, well, that and feminism, but let's not go there. Um, <laughs> the reason I'm a fan of universal basic income is science. It's the fact that all of the scientific studies that have been done on the provision of universal income 
show that when people have money for doing nothing, they don't do nothing. What they do is it suddenly frees them from the considerations of surviving the bottom two tiers of the Maslow hierarchy of needs, like eating and having shelter at night, and it allows them to start moving towards the upper levels of creativity, productivity, and self-actualization. Because human beings are, by their very nature, creative, and because people get really bored sitting around doing nothing all day, unless they have mental health problems or substance addictions, which have nothing to do with the income, if you give basic income, people become creative. All of the studies show that. It's an abhorrent idea to many capitalists. Um, we're going to have to deal with a lot of abhorrent ideas, and I suggest that the best approach to dealing with those ideas is science. Uh, getting actual answers from actual data, rather than moralistic answers about, everybody should pay their taxes, even if most of it goes to war. Um, yes, this is a problem. But it's only a problem because what we're doing is empowering the middle class to do what every multinational corporation has been doing for decades. How are we doing for time? Anybody give, give me a time check? We're supposed to stop at 1 p.m. We've got half an hour. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Question.